Lord. Now give him the highest praise because you know it's already done. Give him the highest praise with the fruit of your lips. Open up your mouth with the fruit of your lips. With the fruit of your lips, shout hallelujah. It's already done. It's already done. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Now let's go into the Word of God, into the book of Daniel, chapter 10. Daniel, chapter 10. And we are going to begin at verse 12. Daniel, chapter 10. We have been talking about the Holy Spirit over the last few weeks. I began with the sermon, Holy Spirit, I was expecting you. That was the day of Pentecost when the power of the Holy Spirit was released to the church. We talked about last week the Holy Spirit being our enabler. enabler. He's the one that makes things happen for us. And then today I want to talk about the Holy Spirit's assistance and help with us in prayer. Daniel chapter 10, verses 12 through 14. Then he said, and this is an angel that is speaking to Daniel, don't be afraid, Daniel. Since the first day you began to pray for understanding and to humble yourself before your God, your request request has been heard in heaven. I got I I, I gotta I gotta read it again. Since the first day you began to pray for understanding and to humble yourself before your God. Since the first day your request has been heard in heaven. That is a shout. Since the first day you began to pray, your prayer has been heard in heaven. Then he says, I have come in answer to your prayer. I just have to tell you again, prayer is powerful. But now the angel is going to talk about why he was delayed. But for 21 days, the spirit prince of the kingdom of Persia blocked my way. Then Michael, one of the archangels, came to help me. And I left him there with the spirit prince of the king of per kingdom of Persia, representing the kingdom of darkness, representing the uh, Satan and all of his demonic forces. He says, but now I am here to explain what will happen to your people in the future. For this vision concerns a time yet to come. Prayer is powerful. Father God, we thank you for your word. We thank you for this opportunity that we have to come once again as your people, as your children. So speak now. There's a whole lot of situations going on. A whole lot going on in this world. A whole lot going on in this earth. We need a word. In Jesus' name, amen. So let me just speak a little bit about Daniel. Daniel was a man of unwavering faith, a man who was obedient to God. So he's in a situation where the children of Israel had been taken into captivity by the Babylonians, and so they are in Babylon. It is time now for the exile as it is getting ready to be over. But Daniel is seeing a vision, and he is still seeing a vision of persecution for his people, that they would still have to go through a great time of persecution. And so his heart is heavy. And what he wants from the Lord is to get some understanding. 
And so what he decides to do is to go on a fast, a partial fast, and then to spend 21 days on this fast praying to God, seeking understanding. So we can see from Daniel that he has a deep level of dedication and humility before God. And I believe it is an example for us to follow. Because the first thing that stood out to me in reading this passage of scripture is his posture. He puts himself in a posture to hear from God. And this posture that he has to hear from God is one that the angel actually speaks of. He says, to humble yourself before the Lord. Since the first day you began to pray for understanding and humbled yourself before the Lord. There is a reason why when we pray, we get on our knees while we're in the position of bowing down. Bowing down is typically a, a reverence uh, for God. It's what we reverence. Even in the natural realm, in secular places, we bow to people in authority. If we were in England, we would bow if the queen or, or king were to come by or the royals. So as we look at the posture of Daniel, the angel said, you humbled yourself before the Lord. And it, it is so important that we pay attention to whether or not we're in a position to hear from God. Because God oftentimes has a very small, still voice. That's how the word of God described it. And so if we have so many distractions around us, just quite possibly, it could be drowning out the voice of God that you want to hear for yourself. And so we have to create or ensure that we have an atmosphere that is conducive to hearing God, to hearing his voice, to hearing the unction of the Holy Spirit, to be able to know the guidance that he has given because his voice is not oftentimes as audible as we make it sound. But there is something that happens on the inside of you, a voice uh, or a um, uh, uh, spirit to spirit that you know that you're hearing from God. It doesn't have to be that it's a distinct audible voice, but you know it's God. It's just something I, I, I probably don't have the vocabulary to explain it. I just know that there's a knowingness that you get. A knowingness when you know that God is speaking to you spirit to spirit. I can remember years ago um, before I moved to Atlanta and I had to travel to Atlanta for business quite often. And I remembered one time stepping off the plane. And I remember feeling in that moment, this will be the next place that I call home. I, I, I can't explain, I just knew it. I knew it. And sure enough, as events started to unfold, Atlanta became my next home. But I can so clearly, and it's happened many times since then, that there's just this knowingness when you position yourself. That's why meditation is so important. I'm talking about the time you get alone, the time you spend in your secret closet of prayer, the time when you turn off everything around you because you want to be positioned to hear God. Daniel was positioned. And understand the news and the vision that he received was not good. And oftentimes when things are not good, we run to comfort. Daniel ran to self-denial because I want to make sure that I hear him clearly. 
I want him to hear my prayer. The second thing that really stands out for me is when we get into verse 13, where the angel says, for 21 days, the spirit prince of the kingdom of Persia blocked my way. And this is a reminder to all of us that there is an unseen realm that is very active. Let me say, is very active. Can I say to you right now, just as real as the person is to your left and your right, that you can touch them, that you can pinch them, that your eyes can see them, that our senses can perceive what's happening around us. There is an unseen realm that is very active right now, right in this moment, where things and, and spiritual warfare is going on. It is real. It is real, though we can't perceive it in our natural senses, though we can't see, we can't hear, we can't, you know, touch what is going on there. It is very real. And the good thing that we get out of this is that, one, on the first day that Daniel prayed, his prayer made it to heaven. I, I don't, I, mm. On the first day that he prayed, his prayer made it to heaven. I don't know if you can get just how awesome that is that you, I say it over, that you, when you pray, that your prayer leaves this earthly realm. Your prayer leaves this earthly realm. It transcends through the heavens to get to the heaven of heavens where God is. It's how powerful your prayer is. So we know in the word of God that the word tells us that God is the creator of the heavens with an S the heavens and earth. So there are these unseen realms that are very real. So when we think about the first heaven, it is often uh, the, the realm that we are in right now is often referred to as the first heaven because we can see the sky, we can see the clouds, we can breathe in air. That is called the first heaven. The second heaven is the universe. It is outside or beyond Earth's atmosphere. It's where the planets are, the galaxies, the cosmos. That is the second heaven. I think about it when I'm in an airplane and the airplane goes beyond the clouds and I say to myself, there's another realm, another realm. And that realm, even though astronauts can get dressed, um, um, they need to get dressed because once you leave this earthly realm, your earth suit does not work for you anymore. There's another realm. So the second realm. And then there is the third heaven, which is called the heavens, the heaven of heavens because it is the third realm, the third heaven, that is the highest and most exalted spiritual realm, because that is the realm where we speak of the throne of grace, the heaven of heavens. So all of this is what we cannot see, but what is very real. And so in our text today, we see that there is this spiritual warfare that is happening. And I want to make clear to you that the war, or we look at Satan and we look at God, and I will say to you over and over again, don't ever put them on the same level because they are not on the same level. The word talks about that the angel said that the Michael, the archangel, came to his assistance. So if you want to think about Satan and who is his 
uh, maybe his equal adversary. It is not God. He is not equal to God. He, he is not. I, I, I hope this brings you some encouragement because you speak directly to God. This is another thing I want to encourage you or discourage you from doing because there are times when we are praying and in our prayer we say Satan I rebuke you now this is where it is it, it it's like you're talking to God and you want to pause and speak to a lesser being no when you have God's attention you don't need to turn around and start talking to Satan. He's a lesser being. You have the full attention of the creator of the heavens and the earth. You have the attention of the person who no being can match him. No being. He is the most high God. He is creator. So don't, don't pause. Don't put him on pause so that you can start telling Satan who he is and this, that, and the other. No. You are talking to the most high God. The most high God. So when they, he talks about, I done lost my train of thought because I, I just had to say Oh, this is what I want to end that point at. So Michael, the archangel, one of the top angels in heaven. Satan is only an angel. He is only an angel. So if he was to look at who his adversary is, it's the archangel, Michael. Because Michael is one of the toughest and the baddest angels in heaven. So he said that he needed help because for 21 days, these demonic angels were blocking his way. So someone might then want to ask the question, as as I sometimes do, I'm not going to put you in it. It's like, God, this don't even have to go that way. Like, God, couldn't you just intervene? I mean, why we got angels fighting angels? Why, why, why is my prayer being delayed? Because they got some fighting going on between angels. Like, God, can't you just go in there, stop your feet, and say, stop all of this? I do not profess to understand all the ways of God. All I can tell you right now is that God is going to show up. All I can tell you right now is that God will send his angels there to fight on your behalf in the unseen realm that you can't even see. All I can tell you right now that if your prayer is delayed, don't believe it's denied. Just keep believing in God, trusting in God, and knowing. I mean, is there anyone here that truly believes that God is for you? I mean, do you believe that God is for you? Because if you believe that God is for you, even when your prayers, our prayers are delayed, we just believe, God, you must be working something out. You're either, you're either working something out in a, in a realm I cannot see, or you're doing something on the inside of me, but this is what I'm always going to believe, is that you show up on time. That when it is the right time, I know what's going to happen. And I know whatever time you say it is, is the best time for me. And so he says to Daniel, for 21 days we've been fighting, and we've been fighting to get to you, because I have the answer for you. Mm, God is good. I know he's good. I know he's good. So when the word of God, when we talk about all the things that are going on in the unseen realm, I just talked to you about the angels and the demons. 
that we have this group of angels that did not leave heaven um, that stood by God. We have these fallen angels that wanted to follow Satan. We called the fallen angels demons. And then the word of God talks about principalities and powers. And principalities and powers are these demonic forces um, that exert influence. They exert their influence over human institutions. They in exert their influence on, over nations. They exert their influence over society. Those are the principalities and powers. Ephesians 6 and 12 talks to it. For we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world against mighty powers in this dark world and against evil spirits. And where are these evil spirits? In heavenly places. And against evil spirits in heavenly places. That's why sometimes I know you've had to have the feeling like something's going on here. I can't see it. I don't understand it, but I know something's going on. Because I, I, I don't know why things are the way they are. I don't know why it seems so hard sometimes. I don't, I don't understand. I just, I just know. I don't know why I'm emotional. I don't know, know why I got this feeling on the inside of me. Something is going on. And I want to confirm with you today that, yes, something is going on. Something is going on, for we are not fighting against flesh and blood, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against mighty powers in this dark world, and against evil spirits in the heavenly places. But 2 Corinthians 10 and 3 says, but we are human, but we don't wage war as humans do. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal. And I want to talk quickly about a weapon that is so powerful that you have access to it any moment of the day, any hour of the day. And that weapon is your praise. When you set an atmosphere of praise, when something is going on in your home, you need to just stop and you just need to have start a praise party. You need to tell everybody in the house, we're praising God right now in this moment. I know something's going on. I feel it. The atmosphere is not right. There's tension in here. There's something going on. Come on, everybody everybody. Let's stop and let's just have a time of praise. Praise is a powerful weapon for deliverance. Praise is a powerful weapon against spiritual warfare because praise can change the atmosphere. Prayer clears the atmosphere. When we praise the Lord, things begin to happen in the unseen realm. I'm trying to tell you today that you can affect what's happening in the unseen realm. Prayer has a praise has a way of disrupting the enemy. Praise has a way of putting the demons at attention. They become terrified. James 2 and 19 says, you say you have faith for you believe that there is one God. He says, good for you. Even the demons believe there is one God and they tremble in terror. Now they may not be afraid of you, but they're afraid of the God in you. They may think that they can get you all confused and worked up and turn yourself away from God. I'm just trying to tell you, when you are going through and you start saying, Jesus is my Lord and my Savior. When you're going through, when you say, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. When you start walking around your house and saying, Jesus is king. He is the Lord of lords. When you start looking at your circumstances and saying, mm-mm, mm-mm. It don't line up with what the word of God says. When you start quoting scriptures and putting scriptures in the atmosphere I'm trying to tell you things start to change 
they start to change. So this is what, lastly, I get out of this text. The angel began by saying to Daniel, don't be afraid. You got the vision. The vision is giving you signs of persecution that is to come. He said, but don't be afraid. How many times in the word of God, from Old Testament to New Testament, do we hear the words, do not be afraid? Don't be afraid. I want to call out um, some scriptures for you that remind us that we need not be afraid. One of my favorites, Joshua 1 and 9. Have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened. Do not be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. I would then go over to 1 Chronicles 28 and 20. David said to Solomon, be strong and courageous and do it. Do not be afraid. Do not be dismayed. For the Lord God, even my God, is with you. He will not leave you or forsake you. Hmm. Then I go to Isaiah 41 and 10. Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed. For I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Then I get to the New Testament and I go over to 1 Corinthians 16 and 13. It says, be watchful. Stand firm in faith. Act like men. Be strong. Then I go to Ephesians 6 and 10, where it says, finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. I want to tell you today, don't be afraid of whatever is going on. Do not be afraid for the Lord, your God, your God is with you. He will not leave you. He will not forsake you will not. I want you to feel stronger today. If you came in here feeling weak in any, any, because of any situation, I want you to feel stronger today. I want you to be encouraged today. And if you came in here feeling good, strong, encouraged, we get together so we can encourage one another. Oh, I just want you to just tap someone and just tell, be encouraged. Be encouraged. Be encouraged. Be encouraged. Now, as we went, as I continue further in this chapter, I got down to verse 20. The angel replied, do you know why I have come? Soon I must return to fight against the spirit prince of the kingdom of Persia. And after that, the spirit prince of the kingdom of Greece will come. Meanwhile, he says, I'm going to tell you what is written in the book of truth. Hmm. He says, no one helps me against these spirit princes except Michael, your spirit prince. I just want you to see all that you have that God is willing to give to you so that you will continuously have victory. Have victory. And I'm going to end talking about the Holy Spirit because as I say, praise is a weapon. Prayer is as well. The Holy Spirit helps us to pray. Romans 8, 26 and 27 says, Likewise, 
the Spirit helps us in our weakness. For we do not know what to pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. The Holy Spirit guides and empowers our prayer. I don't know if anybody has a prayer that you've been praying for a long time, longer than 21 days. Daniel got an answer in 21 days, but our experience says that sometimes even our answers don't come that quickly. And so in those instances, we may get weak. We may even give up. But the Holy Spirit's role in our life is to help us to pray, even when we don't even have any more words to say. You, I, I, have you ever had a, a, a prayer and you say, I don't know what to say now, Lord. I don't, I don't know what to say. It is in those moments that I expect, that you should expect, that the Holy Spirit will help you to pray. The Holy Spirit teaches us to pray. The Holy Spirit gives us boldness to pray. To pray. He gives us the confidence we need, the boldness that we need. And here's a big one. The Holy Spirit aligns our prayers with the will of God. And so Romans 8.20 says he intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. He ensures our prayers are in line with God's will. This is why sometimes there is a delay. Because our desires and our prayers may start out not aligned with the will of God. And God hears each and every prayer that we make. And so the Holy Spirit's role at most times is that as God is fighting for us, the Holy Spirit is doing something in us. Let me say that again. As God is fighting for us in the unseen realm, the Holy Spirit is doing something in us. The key to make prayer is to make prayer a constant in your lifestyle, that it becomes your lifestyle and not just an activity you do when you're in trouble. And so the Holy Spirit works it out on the inside of us that before we know it, our prayer requests may begin to change a little bit. He may have to tweak it a little bit. Maybe he has to say to you, no, that's not the one. And you're still praying that that is the one. But by the time the Holy Spirit gets done working on you, you say, to you, oh, no, that's not the one. <laughs> okay, cancel that prayer request. Cancel that one. But that is the role of the Holy Spirit, that he helps to align our will with God's will so that our will is God's will. That's what he does. So I want to encourage you today. Continue praying. Pray without ceasing. Continue to pray. And as you pray, keep your faith from, um, let it be unwavering faith. Ask God, align my will so my will is your will. And as we come before God, Position to hear him. I am confident your prayers are being heard and your prayer will be answered. I need to have some believers in here. I have so many stories that are flooding through my mind right now on people that I have witnessed who believed in the power of prayer. And I'm not talking about praying and, you know, it just happens. No, I'm talking about people who prayed for years for something. I will tell you that there's something on my heart that I have been praying for about eight years now. Is not a husband. (laughs) 
And I don't see signs right now of the situation changing. I don't see the signs, but that's what my natural eyes. With my spiritual eyes, I believe God has heard my prayer. I believe my prayer is aligned with the will of God. So over these eight years, I believe God has trained me and taught me what it means to wait on him. That I can tell you right now that I'm not giving up on my prayer. My prayer is about someone else. And so I believe that even though I don't see any signs of the situation changing, I still believe it will. I believe it's a fight. I believe it involves spiritual warfare. I know my part, that I've talked to God as if it's already been done. God, I thank you for the deliverance. God, I thank you for your help. I thank you for the people that you have lined up. I thank you, Father, for the prophets that will continue to speak. And so each and every day, I'm in expectation of seeing the change. Because I believe it's coming. And I pray that you have faith. How, how, how can I believe that? I watched my grandmother pray for my father as an alcoholic for at least seven, eight, nine years. I believe every time I saw her on her knees when she got up in the morning, she said a prayer, prayer for her family. I believe when I saw her at night, on her knees that she was praying for her son and praying for her grandchildren. I believe that. I believe I'm here today as a result of her prayers being heard. I believe that. There's too much evidence for me. I believe also on the day that my husband was transitioned to heaven, he believed so mightily in the power of prayer. He believed that it was the prayers of the saints that delivered him from death the first time. The first time that I witnessed him flatline, I knew that there were saints in the church that were praying at that moment. When I watched him recover from not being able to walk to being able to walk again, when I watched that when he came back on this church campus, the first thing he did was got on his knees, bent down, and thanked God for helping him, for saving him, for healing him. Then he said to me, I don't know what the time frame was, he said, the next time something like that happens, I don't want you to. Y'all have heard me say this again, but th this, is, this is on my heart. My grandmother stays on my heart when it comes to prayer, knowing how she prayed for my father. My father was delivered from alcohol, and he ended up being the one that helped her. I know the power of prayer. When I think about Bishop, when he told me not to pray, he says, if I'm ever on my back in the hospital again, if they ever have to intubate me again, I don't want you to pray. I don't want you to call the church. I don't want you to call the intercessors. I don't want you to call them. And I'm asking you not to pray to keep me here. He said, because God and I are good. We're good. I don't know. This is my belief. Maybe it'll be confirmed in heaven one day. I know that when they called me that Sunday morning and said, hey, do you know Ron Saylor? I said, yes, I know Ron Saylor. That's my husband. How do you know Ron Saylor? She said, well, I have his wallet. And I said, well, why do you have his wallet? I'm in the hospital. 
so where is my husband? I just need you to come to the hospital. That's all she said. I just need you to get to the hospital. I know when Deacon Janice Willie drove me to the hospital, and I think Deacon Lindell was with her as well. We all were going to the hospital. I have the ticket, but when I pulled the ticket out, it was 8.38 a.m. When I walked through the doors of the emergency room, the chaplain came, sat me down to tell me the news. I then remember getting the death certificate. And on the death certificate, it said the time of death was 8.40 a.m. I entered the hospital grounds at 8.38 a.m. He was pronounced dead at 8.40. I just believe in my heart he did not want me to see him because I would not, had not been able to pray. But I know Bishop. He believed in the power of prayer so strongly. Now, this could be my imagination. I don't know, but I know him. That he would not. He said to me, don't pray for me. Because if I get an opportunity to go, I'm gone. Because me and God are okay. All I'm saying to you and encouraging you you believe in the power of your prayers. You believe that God responds to your prayers. You believe it. I've been surrounded by people who believe in the power of their prayers. And so don't you give up praying. You be persistent in your prayers. You trust God. You believe in God. You believe right now in this moment, this second, you believe that God is for you, that God is fighting in the unseen realm to make sure that when he wants to get to you, it will get to you. You just believe it. Believe it. Believe it. You believe it. You take God at his word. He said, don't be afraid. Be encouraged. Can I see the hands of the people that are encouraged now? Stay encouraged. Be encouraged. God will not forsake you. I got to come over here. I got to tell you, God will not forsake you. God will not forsake you. His promise is, I will not leave you, nor will I forsake you. When he hears your prayers, he sends and dispatches the angels to come and fight on your behalf. He dispatches the angels to come on your behalf. He understands that the adversary is gonna try and block what is coming to you, but he dispatches the angels on your behalf. Take him at his word. Take him at his word. Be persistent. We are way by, um, beyond our time. I, I got it. I understand. We're going to get back on time. We're, we're beyond our time. But I want to pray today, saints. I want to pray. I'm asking Pastor Diaz to come up. And if anyone wants to stand at the altar... If anyone wants to kneel at the altar, because here's what I'm imagining. Every word that is coming out of Pastor DS's mouth is transcending from the first heaven through the second heaven and making it to the third heaven. And when God hears the prayer, 
God is already beginning to unleash his plan to get the answer to each and every one of us. I believe God is that concerned about you. I believe that God loves you that much that this prayer, God is already has a plan and he'll dispatch the angels. Pastor DS. Amen. Can I ask you to pray with me? No, no, no. I'm not speaking religiously. I need you to pray with me. I'll say the words. Amen. But you push it. Amen. Be in there with me. Amen. Let's touch heaven. Come on. I want power. Too many want power to be released in this moment. Come on. Who has that kind of faith right now? Oh, Father. Here we are, oh God. Your people, oh God. Your children, Lord. First of all, we lift up the name of Jesus right now in this place. You are the King of kings, the Lord of lords, all-powerful, all-knowing, the beginning and the end. You are our God. And we lift your name right now in Jesus' name, Lord. Lord, we are asking you, Lord God, to move on our behalf in the name of Jesus, Lord. Touch, Lord God, the brokenhearted right now in the name of Jesus, Lord God. Touch, Lord God, those who may be weak, Lord. You said, let the weak say I am strong in the name of Jesus, Lord. Touch those who may have mental anguish right now in the name of Jesus. For your word says that we can have the mind of Christ, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Lord God. Touch every future right now in the name, as our graduates came today, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Touch their future, Lord, in the name of Jesus, that they will have no fear, Lord God, of their future, knowing that they're in your hands in the name of Jesus. For you said in Jeremiah 29 and 11, and I know the plans that I have for you, Lord, plans to keep you, oh God, and plans to bring you to an expected end in the name name of Jesus, Lord. You said, Lord God, you are the great physician, Lord, in the name of Jesus. So, Lord, I stand, Lord God, rebuking sickness right now in the name of Jesus, all the way down to allergies and sinuses, Lord, right now in the name of Jesus. Clear it, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. I say high blood pressure, Lord. You've got to go right now. Diabetes, Lord, you have to move in the name of Je Jesus, Lord. The great physician is doing surgery as we speak in the name of Jesus, Lord. Lord God, I review cancer right now in Jesus' mighty name. It should have no place, Lord God, in our bodies in the name of Jesus. I cause it now to, to dissipate, Lord, right now in the name of Jesus. I call it now, right now, Lord God, to any lump, Lord God, knowing or unknowing, will be benign right now in the name of Jesus, Lord God. I thank you for future, Lord God, generations, Lord, that shall walk in victory in Jesus' mighty name. Your children's children's children will testify of the victory of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, in the name of Jesus. I say right now, every home is blessed in the name of Jesus. Nothing broken, nothing missing in Jesus' mighty name. We walk in the victory of the Lord. We walk in the blessings of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, Lord. We, Lord God, pray your will over each each and every one of us, Lord God, that we shall enter into your will right now in the name of Jesus. Not your permissive will, Lord, but your divine will in Jesus' mighty name, Lord. And let us, Lord God, let us, Lord God, worship you, Lord, in spirit, Lord God, and in truth in our everyday lives, Lord. We will no longer wait till we come to church, Lord God, but we will worship you in spirit and truth at our homes, Lord, in our jobs, Lord God, in what we say and, and how we think in the name of Jesus, how we treat people, Lord, we'll worship you in spirit and in truth, Lord. Thank you for it, Lord God. Thank you for your healing and your victorious power, Lord, on the inside of us, Lord, that what we touch, Lord God, shall be healed, that what we 
every touch shall be set free because you live and you reside on the inside of every believer in the name of Jesus. Do it for us, Lord, but more than anything, oh God, you do it through us in the name of Jesus. Oh, I'm, I'm challenging somebody to praise him right now like it's done. I know what it looks like. I know it don't look so good, but I need you to praise him like it's done. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Oh, come on. Push. Hallelujah. Push. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, open your mouth. Give it to him. Hallelujah. Oh, somebody's being healed in this moment. Hallelujah. Somebody has been, anxiety is going away in this moment. Hallelujah. Depression is, is, is dissipating right now. Hallelujah. In this moment, fear is gone. Hallelujah. Because the love of God has shown up. Hallelujah. On the inside of you. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. 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 Let the praise atmosphere, let, let the atmosphere be filled with praises unto our God. Let's praise him right now. Give him his accolades. Give him uh, his admiration. Admire him right now. Whatever God is to you, whoever he is to you right now, thank him, God. Thank you for being my healer. Thank you for being my deliverer. Thank you for being my way maker. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for being the, the judge in the courtroom. Thank you, oh Lord. Thank you, oh Lord. Just confess you need him, Lord. I need you, Lord. I need you right now, Lord. I need you, 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 O oh Lord. I need you. Hallelujah, hallelujah.